Welcome to this new how to. In this how to, we're gonna look at how you can use the autopilot in the H4 Hercules, also known as the uh, Spruce Goose. Uh, be aware that this is a pre release of the software, right? It's, I would say, part of the beta program of uh, sim update number 12. So you might not have uh, this in your flight sim. So, first of all, where can you find it? Well, as you can see, some things have changed here, right? There are some new things here, including an avionics system uh, and as well as the autopilot, uh, which is over here. And there's a small note, and that's, I would say, kind of funny, right? It says, hey, if you want to hide these avionics, then you can use the clipboard on your left, right? Which is, well, here. And this is where you can hide all the, I would say, modern equipment, right? So it will simply rip out all these nice things, and then you're flying with an, I would say, with the old style aircraft as it normally is simply going back and uh, simply switching it on right will uh, make sure that it's being enabled the other thing right which you can do is uh, curtains up and down uh, also nice right you can, can do the curtains up and down on the left and right side we'll zoom out a bit uh, so there are some more i uh, say things over here which you can uh, manipulate right so that's cool so back to the system right so what can you do with the autopilot well the autopilot is between brackets kind of limited but you can do most of the things right this is the master button if you switch it on you can see that the AP light is burning here which tells me hey the autopilot is on uh, the other one is the vertical speed you can uh, manipulate the vertical speed uh, however when I look at the I would say buttons then I'm really wondering where you can manage that well I figured it out uh, after quickly looking at these two buttons and that's where you can uh, use it the barometer pressure is for some reason it's here maybe it's relevant I'm not sure and then we've got the heading select mode right the heading select mode and you've got the nav mode and they work exactly the same as with I would say the modern aircraft right so if you want to fly based on your navigation system so based on the flight plan which you configured then you might want to use the nav mode Else you can use the heading mode, which focuses on the heading which you set up in the system. Uh, and that's another thing, and uh, that's what we'll probably need to figure out, hey, where is that button where you can manipulate this. Then of course we've got the approach mode, which is used for the approaches when approaching aircrafts, or air airports, sorry. We've got the back course mode, right, if you want to fly in the opposite direction. And we've got the altitude hold mode. The altitude hold mode is currently enabled. As you can see, right, so we're, let's say, kindly flying on a 9,000 feet. And if we change it a bit, right, you have the small knob and the large knob. The large knob is to change it really, at us say, per thousand. Then you directly see an alert here, which says, hey, uh, I'm going to change the altitude. And you can see that the aircraft directly starts to act. And the vertical speed is increasing, uh, as you can imagine. And it's always cool, right? So that's at least for the... Um, I would say for the altitude, that's how you can control it. It's relatively easy, right? Not that hard. Now the heading mode, that's a different thing, right? Because the heading mode, well, how does it work, right? Because here we've got that heading bug. Maybe it has to do with that. Let's So let's press the option and uh, let's press heading and let's see what happens. Uh, and we can directly see that the aircraft starts to turn. Well, in which the direction will it turn? Well, likely in this one. So what we can do is do it like this then it should stop turning or it will make a correction because we just changed it and that's how you can control the aircraft's I would say direction as well as the altitude right so pretty easy not that hard uh, I'd say and pretty nice now since these new avionics are also added to uh, flight simulator as well or as part of the sim update number 12 uh, and specifically for this aircraft the H4 Hercules Let's have a look at how we can use the nav mode, right? Because that's another thing which we can use. Uh, so the Avionex master is switched on, which is good. Uh, so let's uh, go to the uh, flight plan, right? So the flight plan is currently empty, as you can see. And then when we uh, say scroll to it, using these buttons, you don't see much. So let's figure out if we can find uh, a navigation uh, option here or a navigation uh, beacon here, which is close in the direction. Uh, to do that we need to move back and then we can use this uh, large knob and uh, to uh, say scroll to the list and then you will find the WPT right for waypoint and if we 
move around, we can see that we can scroll to different options. This is, I would say, normal. It looks like this is the GNS 530 or 430. Um, so pretty cool, right? But as you can see in the waypoint, there's nothing we can use. Well, that's, I would say, logic, because what we need to do is we need to use the nearest. And the nearest option allows us to select one of the waypoints which we want to fly to. Right, you've got in this case the nearest airport, but if you use that small knob, you can go to nearest intersection, uh, nearest NDB, nearest VOR, and nearest airspace. So nice that they have added this and it makes it easy. In some cases, you can see that it takes a little bit longer for it to load because uh, previously the uh, VORs were empty and as well as the NDBs, but now it's being populated. So what we can do from this piece is hey, simply say, hey, let's select one of those items by uh, pressing the uh, cursor button, right? You can right click on it, then we'll activate it and then press enter. And then it will say, hey, this is the intersection. Well, I'll say, okay, hey, enter directly. And then I will get some information about this. So the nearest VOR in this case is uh, Yankee Delta Foxtrot, right? That's the one which we can use. It's not mandatory to use it, but we can use it. Now, if we press this option, the direct two, it will directly program the uh, flight or the, sorry, the intersection. And then it will ask us, hey, do you want to activate it? Well, in this case, yes, we want to activate it, right? So let's press this one, activate, and then the uh, flight plan uh, should be populated now with this flight, if we're lucky. I don't see it yet. So what we can do in this case is switch to nav mode. Let's see what happens if something happens right and here you can see what happens right because we didn't actually set up the uh, flight plan right because we used the direct mode if you would you have used a flight plan then you would see the active flight plan which you pre-programmed uh, if i would open the vfr map uh, then i will likely also not see anything and the reason for that is because we did select the uh, direct two option so let me uh, switch off the flight plan Oh, here it is right so this direction is flying so it's really strange because here it shows it right that pink line but here on the VFR map it's not showing it yet sometimes it takes some time uh, sometimes it doesn't appear but maybe it's I would say in this case we're lucky and we'll populate it but to be honest I doubt so that's why I always use this nice panel because this nice panel always tells the truth right <coughs> so let's close this one so what we've now done is we switched to the navigation mode and the navigation mode will simply follow the uh, I would say direction in which you uh, did set up the uh, navigation system right either the flight plan or using the uh, VNAV mode or the direct to mode sorry, as we uh, say just discussed and you can see it goes in the correct direction it gives me the ETA and all kind of other cool stuff right so this is really useful because now we've got this nice system the GNS 530 I'm seeing it here on top it's not the 4, 430 Houston, it's the 530 and I would say it will now be uh, we're now able to simply use this simple simple system to fly this huge aircraft right so you're not depending on manually controlling the aircraft you can simply now also use the autopilot again if you, you want to get rid of it you can still use that by unchecking this box over here right so we're flying right you can see that it makes kind of uh, weird angles over here but it's that's good so that's how it works right so relatively easy the other things which they have added is the GTX 330 right which is the uh, one where you have the transponder as well as the communication radio so you can also communicate uh, let's say with the ATC uh, where you're flying to so really cool uh, let's say makes flying easier so here ends this video because there's I would say not more to show well except the approach mode uh, we could have I could have shown it but I'm not going to show it right now um, if you want to use the uh, climb mode you can also do that right because that's the one we, we skipped before saying goodbye to you so what you can do is you can uh, say increase the altitude uh, so let's set it to 9000 
or 9000 here and then use this mode the vertical mode and then use the up and down button to control how far you're gonna climb or how far you're gonna descend right always easy to do that uh, I kind of say I'm doubting if this really works because as you can see the mode doesn't change right it already says hey the alt mode is activated so what you need to do is you need to switch off that option then it goes to VS mode which is the vertical uh, yeah, vertical speed mode and based on that you can make those changes right so switch off the alt mode and then uh, change it to the uh, R mode the vertical speed and based on that you can use it so you now don't see alt anymore but you see the VS mode if you want to the aircraft to automatically decide what the climb rate will be then you can switch on the alt mode and move this button up to the correct altitude and then it will do its climbing or descending automatically and there we go right so we're climbing now with let's say roughly 600 right that's what we set up uh, so everything goes automatic really cool right so now we can end the video because this is where we end this video uh, in this video we looked at how you can uh, uh, say use the autopilot and the new avionics system in the h4 hercules i hope you liked this video if you liked it then consider to use the like button if you got questions or comments then feel free to post them in the comment box below and if you want to stay up to date about new videos i'm posting then make sure to subscribe to my channel thanks for watching and see you next time